Welcome to Meet the Drapers. I'm Tim Draper. This is my father, Bill Draper. My sister, Polly Draper. We are here to create the next generation of startup heroes. Every week, three heroes pitch their game-changing ideas to us. We choose one winner to move to the playoffs. Three heroes of our choice then move to the finals. But here's the big twist. You, the viewers, can invest with us in these companies. The three heroes that you fund the most will also move to the finals, where they'll battle it off for half a million dollars. The power is now in your hands. Hey, welcome everybody back to Meet the Drapers. Today, I have with me my father, my sister, and a special guest judge. My father, of course, was a pioneer in venture capital. He's been at it for years and years and years. Most recently, he runs DRK Foundation, funding entrepreneurs who are nonprofits. And my sister is an entrepreneur herself. She's created a number of different movies. She is a director, producer, actor, writer. She does it all. She is Hollywood personified. What do you two think an entrepreneur should do to overcome adversity, the virus or an earthquake, when something critical happens, it creates sort of an open field for an entrepreneur. What, what do you think an entrepreneur uh, should be thinking about and doing to, uh, to overcome this adversity? Try to stay safe. And if there is a time where he, he should tell his team to stay home, he should not be a afraid to do that despite the fact that it'll damage the returns. When I've been in lockdown this whole time, I've been thinking of different ways to create. Human beings are incredibly resourceful and they find ways to, to circumvent all horrible things. Okay, so let's bring on a, a true entrepreneur, Naveen Jain. He is our guest judge today, and he's been on Meet the Drapers so often that we have anointed him Naveen Jane Draper. He has an amazing record of entrepreneurship. Most recently, he runs Viome. He also wrote a book called Moonshot. So Naveen, thank you, and welcome back to the show. First off, Tim, it's always, I look forward to this thing every single year. This is my highlight of the year, if I may say so. Um, and, at, you know, Tim, the question that you asked was really interesting that what should entrepreneurs do when they are faced with adversity and when they are faced with the blue swan events? And to me, it's really interesting as an entrepreneur, every adversity is an opportunity that it creates for you that did not exist. The COVID, it has really advanced healthcare by a decade. We would not have seen a telehealth for another 10 years in this country. That has really, really accelerated. It used to be, I do my thing, I get sick, I go to the hospital. Now, every one of us are thinking, the last thing I want to do is to get sick and go to the hospital. <laughs> and now we are saying, what can we do not to be sick, right? So to me, every adversity is a great opportunity. So I'm so glad you started out with that question. I think that people, when they're stuck in place, their imaginations flow. Well, I think that our imagination brings the whole thing closure. It is our mind somehow believes we are stuck on this spacecraft called planet Earth. And once we open up our mind, we know that's not just our solar system, not even our galaxy, not even our universe. This multiverse is really our place to be. Ha! Fantastic. Wow. We're going to be there. We're going to explore all the galaxies in the multiverse. Let's start by exploring three new entrepreneurs. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. And we're going to need your, uh, your eyebrows to go up and down there, Naveen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I started to choose health really out of a frustration that I had personally. There's so much education in the healthcare space. It's really difficult for end users to actually understand where they're at on their health journey and what they should do to improve. Could we strip enough cost and complexity? Could we make this simple enough where I would do this on a monthly basis? So really we want to give people back control. We want to make it easy. We want to educate and we want to simplify the health journeys. For us to, to win the show would mean that both the audience and the judges would believe in the thesis that we have, would see the progress we've made. It would be a massive point of validation along the journey to to really bring shoes out to the next level. Our first entrepreneur, Mark Holland from Choose Health. Mark, give us your pitch. Hi Tim, hi team. My name is Mark Holland, I'm the CEO of Choose Health. Choose Health is the best experience in, in at-home blood testing and tracking. So COVID-19 is having a profound effect on society. People are moving less, eating more, drinking more, and uncertainty is a bigger part of everyday life. Telehealth consults have doubled and remote care is mainstream. At-home convenience is now the expectation. So at Choose Health, we're focused on helping 1 million people improve at least one key marker of internal health. Understanding these key markers like cholesterol, like inflammation, like insulin resistance shouldn't require a medical degree. The truth is that 78% of adults over the age of 55 in the US today have at least one chronic disease. But your blood holds the secrets to identifying many of these chronic diseases that you or I could develop over my lifetime. Being healthy doesn't have to be hard, but it does have to be personal. So picture Alex, our CTO. He's a pre-diabetic, he has a young kid, and he's a busy early stage entrepreneur. He hasn't tested his blood in three years. So Alex's personal health journey will be as easy as day one, he visits the Choose Health website, takes a short survey to help him select the markers that align with his goals or health concerns. And for just $68, orders a kit directly to his home. Day five, he takes a simple at-home Choose Health blood test to establish his baseline. Alex then mails it back to one of our third-party CAP and CLIA accredited labs to test the sample. Day 10, Alex views his results online, learns more about the markers he chose and markers he needs to improve, and adopts a set of personalized diet, exercise, or lifestyle suggestions created by our team of functional physicians through the Choose Health app. Day 90, Alex then tests every quarter to see how his markers are improving and trending over time. In nine months today of operations this year today, we've grown our user base by 500% and have a recurring monthly revenue of over 20K. We have a direct to consumer offering and an affiliate model for healthcare practitioners to offer remote testing to their clients and patients. Do I have to poke myself with a needle? What do I have to do each time I want this biomarker test? On your finger, yeah. So it's going to be the way diabetics test their blood. Is your first target market diabetics, or are you just trying to go after everybody? Um, I think we've moved just beyond the early adopter phase in this market, where the early adopters were customers with a necessity like diabetes, whereas terms like inflammation and insulin resistance are becoming more mainstream, where people want to test these markers on a more regular basis. And where is your revenue coming from? Is it from the tests? Are the tests out there now? Yeah. By the end of 2020, we will have about 250K in revenue in our first year in operation. Uh, about half of that is from our direct consumer business and the rest from our B2B physician affiliate model. Yeah, so Mark, this is a very, very crowded market here. I mean, you know Everly Well is selling 200 plus tests right now. When it comes to you, what is your intellectual property here other than just simply being a marketing company on top of someone else's test? I've really tried to focus in on the personalized aspect of this, as in we really focus on the customer experience. We don't just throw 200 tests in front of somebody and let them decide. We help them. So we have a series of questions and surveys that help people think through, why would I want to do this test? How does this align with my health goals and concerns? When they get the results back, we really focus on providing insights to the test. So if my inflammation levels are high and I told you I'm eating a standard American diet, then the likelihood is that the standard American diet might be having a negative impact on your inflammation levels. Have you tried another type of diet that has some scientific relevance for improving that specific marker? Is this all about advising on diet? 
or is it about uh, a lot, uh, you know, uh, alerting you to to health risks that you need to go to the doctor for? What kind of things are you testing for? Because uh, last year, the winner of the whole shebang was Vivu, who did a pee stick that tested all sorts of issues in your body. What does this do that's, that's, that's more powerful or more necessary? We're really focused on the blood. We believe that the blood holds a lot of the secrets. Uh, our core markers in our kit are inflammation, insulin sensitivity, cholesterol ratio, oxidative stress, average blood sugar, and visceral fat. So these are key components that almost any doctor would view to be vitally important uh, for long-term health and chronic disease prevention. You would go to a doctor to get that test ordinarily, but this is skipping the middleman. Correct, yeah. At most annual physicals, these are the markers your doctor would, would advise you to take. Yeah, as, uh, Mark, again, I mean, I think you're basically saying that you are a good marketing company that is really uh, creating a user experience, but not creating intellectual property for yourself. So in a sense that simply as Polly said, you're going to be a middleman and you can obviously take some small margin there, but the, the labs can constantly keep pushing you for higher prices because you don't have any control. So how are you going to deal with that because you are basically just a customer acquisition for the lab? I mean, the, the direct to consumer lab testing market is growing at 53% a year. How big we, is it now? So the, the direct to consumer testing market is 300 million in 2019, but the overall diagnostics market was 56 billion in the same year. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to remain lab agnostic because one, I can suggest the best device to test with and two I can choose the best lab with the best pricing so I understand your concern it is something that we think about but with all the labs that we know innovating in this space I'm pretty confident that we'll continue to be able to provide the best pricing were you inspired by Theranos at all, at all? <laughs> I thought you might ask me that yeah I was wondering about that too I won't make too many comments on it, but I've seen and read a lot. Uh, we were very adamant on using third party labs, using the experts to do our testing on our behalf. But I mean, the core message is still relevant today. Giving users back control of their health is still very relevant today. Terrific. Well, thank you, Mark. Good job. Give me a high five. Thanks for being a part of Meet the Drapers. I wish you all the best. So, what did you all think? Polly, why don't you start? He's got a pretty uphill battle with because of the whole Theranos thing, particularly because the one great thing that we thought was true about the Theranos thing was that she had her own labs and it was gonna be like a farm to table kind of the situation. He's just, I guess, the middleman for that. I liked the idea and I felt it was muddied by a lot of other problems. And I, look, this is an idea true and tried. Everly Well has been doing it for the last three, four years. And there's, you know, reasonably successful company. Um, in terms of, I don't worry about Theranos situation here because these are the standard tests. What Theranos was trying to do was to do it differently than how people did that required a lot of blood. What I think what he's doing is really creating a user experience to make it easy for you to be able to do that, do it at home, because many of these big players haven't created a good user experience. With, we'll have some value but not a lot of value but if you can create intellectual property around the reasons you're getting sick then you create a massive amount of enterprise value dad what did you think i needed to hear more about how he's going to reach this market knowing what i know i'd like i'd like to back him if i didn't find other problems along the way uh, i give him the benefit of the doubt as of now with five minutes 
I thought uh, it is good to have a little convenience, and I do like the idea of being able to run my tests at home, but there was no real technological edge here, and so I'm a little concerned about that. Okay, so thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. Which way are you gonna go? I can never get my thumb to, I'm like. Just I'm, point it right where your face is. Oh. I still Mine's can't middle. see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, middle. three in the middle and I'm down. Okay, terrific. So let's move on. Let's meet our next entrepreneur, our next hero. I'm excited about it. Yeah, that's good, Polly. Very nice. Um, yeah, I, we got it. <laughs> we still got now it. No, I'm just trying. Just. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's bring on our. <laughs> let's bring on our next entrepreneur. Our next hero. Sorry. They're gonna make. <laughs> At some point, uh, Polly's gonna get this thumb thing down. Let's bring on our next entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's happening behind the scenes. After receiving a PhD in biomedical sciences, I went to Mexico to become a surgeon um, to save lives. In the meantime, my father suffered rare cancer. The incidence was 10 in 1 million people. But uh, when I actually analyzed his DNA, this cancer was predictable and preventable. So for my father's case, it was too late, but I wanted to provide this opportunity to other people before it's too late. That's why we built Predictive. So the main impact Predictive will have on people is saving lives. We want to predict and prevent those diseases that impact our close relatives, friends, colleagues. This is our mission. Why you should invest in predictive is that we are building the future of medicine. We are going from a reactive medicine to a proactive medicine. So when you go to the physician, it's not because you're sick, it's because you want to avoid being sick. Okay, let's hear from our next entrepreneur. Go ahead, tell us about Predictive. Hi, I'm Sajun, CEO and co-founder of Predictive. Here is Alex, uh, co-founder and COO. About seven years ago, my father suffered from rare cancer. A few years later, as I was teaching genomics at Johns Hopkins University, I analyzed his DNA and found out this cancer could have been predicted and prevented. According to NIH, not just my father, but over 10% of serious diseases could have been prevented. It was too late for my father, but we wanted to provide this opportunity to other people before it's too late for them. That's why we built Predictive. Predictive is a DNA-based digital twin to predict and prevent diseases. We analyzed the, your world genome, 20,000 genes. We compared it to 16,000 diseases and 300 drugs. We do that in real time, this is searchable, and we can set up some preventive actions and treatments based on that. What we want to do is to provide the 67% of US adults in the US that are willing to get genetic testing to identify their risk for any disease or conditions. And to do that, we go through healthcare professionals, physicians, nurses, hospitals, governments for $490. So where we are today, we have a solution that is fully operational. We actually just launched our MVP. Uh, we have had a lot of success in the discussions we had so far with telemedicine companies, software providers, but also physicians who are willing to use our solution. Tomorrow, what we plan to do is to integrate even more health data, medical data, but also to bring some premium features such as recommendations regarding nutrition, fitness, and many others. That is the beginning of a very exciting journey, which is building predictive medicine. How did you two meet? Yeah, we uh, met about a year ago through an advisor. We got along very well. I have expertise in genomics, and Alex has an expertise in developing the tech product and rapid expansion. For example, his first company, he uh, rapidly expanded to 160,000 users within two years. I asked him to join, and uh, here we are. And what's the distribution approach? How, 
How are you going to get the word out? Is this going to go through doctors or patients or how, how do you reach everyone? So at first, we really want to go through healthcare professionals, so through doctors, and to reach out to those doctors, because I mean, that's a lot of individuals also to reach. The idea is really to go through software providers, so the one who builds the electronic health records, but also telemedicine companies who already have that kind of network. As you know that genes and or DNA is really not your destiny because you know most of the time it's really the gene expression and identical twins can get completely different set of diseases and 90 percent of all chronic diseases have nothing to do with dna very little to do with the dna it is fundamentally uh, around microbiome and also the even the gene expression so your lifestyle rather than your genes themselves so how do you look into the disease markers and are you getting a lot of metadata from the consumer to be able to build the predictive markers? We analyze the entire genome and then we cross-reference to the like a clean bar or those NCBI database only from the published literature. So what we cannot do is that we cannot predict this person actually going to have this disease in five years. But what we could do is this person has a high risk for this disease. What we are doing is that we warn them, hey, you have a inborn disease high risk, so do the preventive measures to uh, lower the risk or reduce the impact of those diseases. I've seen 23 in me, and that does a lot of predictive things too. How is this different? You know, 23 in me will tell me the likelihood that I'll have a stroke or if I have a, the marker for Parkinson's disease, is this the same thing, only more extreme? I, I don't know, quite understand. 23 and me picked some diseases and got and analyzed the genes that are related to those diseases. Our approach was completely different. We went the other way around. We look at your entire genome and based on the research that exists today and the knowledge we have today, we identify the 16,000 diseases that might impact you. So on one side, you have 14 diseases for 23 and me. On the other side, you have 16,000 and could be even more and could be even more accurate based on research that is done every day. And research goes very fast in that field. Veritas does a full whole genome sequencing and they just shut down. Getting people to do genetic testing is actually going down. And a lot of people are very, very, I would say, uh, worried about giving their DNA data to the companies. 23andMe market is slowing down. I mean, Ancestry market is slowing down. And Veritas shut down for the same reason, even though they were doing exactly what you're doing, right? I mean, they were doing the full genome sequencing for $600. Yeah, uh, that's a very good point. However, our use case is completely different. We are not another 23andMe. We are not another Veritas genetics. What we use for this is, to, for example, misdiagnosis. In 2019, 20 million mis misdiagnosed cases in the United States and 60,000 deaths happened. What we are able to do it is the real-time, personalized, genetics-based clinical decision support system to reduce the misdiagnosis rate. In, in terms of the adverse drug reactions, we simulate the adverse drug reactions before people take it. So we are not just another genetic sequencing company. We are a digital twin company. Are you expecting medical insurance to pay you? or are you hoping the consumer does or the patient or the doctor or the hospital? So we have some CPT codes so to get the reimbursement for the insurance. The fact that we go through physicians or through healthcare professionals makes that they would be the one prescribing that test. So you can get reimbursed based on that. Terrific. Okay, well, thank you. Thanks so much, Predictive, for being, and being on the thank show you. and meeting the Drapers. Keep up your heroism. Very good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, heroes! So, uh, what did you all think? Uh, Naveen, you want to start? 
the CEO is very smart. He obviously understands the basic science. He's very capable. It's a tough market. Genetics is just a really, really tough market. And trying to tell people that we are better than 23 and me, and you know, that's where you lose most people is that when you have to tell someone why you are slightly better off rather than it's completely different and disruptive. But I mean, I, I think they're very capable people and I wish them nothing but success. Do you think that the doctor is gonna not know the difference between 23 and me and what these guys are doing? In my opinion, the most doctors don't understand genetic testing at all. In their mind, it is a unproven field and they don't, it's very hard to get them into clinical market with an unproven field. And that's the reason 23 and me sells to the consumers, not to the doctors. I have no idea whether they're going to be successful or not, but I would take a bet on them. I, I, they're competent people and I liked it. He only passed the hero test for me. He has a real reason for what he does and he is not going anywhere. Polly, what'd you think? Genetic testing was basically what saved my husband's life from cancer. So, I would bet on it. But a lot of companies, I mean, Tempus is really big in that. I mean, Tempus is doing a really good job in that particular field. I mean, they look at all the biopsies, all the DNA, everything. So what would be the advantage of this? Would this be a cheaper way of getting it into the system? Or what? what is the advantage that isn't this? If, I think that Tempus is much farther ahead. They have really integrated themselves into the hospitals. But look, these are smart guys uh, and a smart team, they'll get acquired. If they do anything, somebody will buy them because they're a smart team, not because they have a lot of technology. So you don't think the 16,000 is a lot better than the than the 16? No, the disease markers for genetics are just very, very poor. I mean, they're just not very good. They're really not much in the genetics that are uh, very predictable. Okay, so let's do it, let's vote. It's, it's hard to vote on something you don't understand well. Naveen, sounds like you got two votes. Okay, thumbs up, <laughs> thumbs okay. down, thumbs all around. I'm kidding. All right. Oh, oh, okay, I'm going up. I'm going up because I'm basically doing Naveen. Three ups and one three quarters, great. Okay, with that, let's move on to our third entrepreneur of the day. But before we do, Let's see what's going on behind the scenes. We started Audio Cardio about four years ago after a trip that I had with my grandfather to Montana. During that trip, I realized how bad my grandfather's cognitive decline was becoming. After the trip, I went home to do some information gathering and found studies showing a higher risk of dementia due to untreated hearing loss. My grandfather had severe hearing loss, had tinnitus, and never purchased hearing aids. My grandfather became frustrated, isolated, depressed, and eventually passed from complications with dementia. And that's why we started Audio Party. Our goal is to fill the gap for the people who know that they have a hearing problem, but for whatever reason, don't want to purchase a hearing aid. Winning this competition would mean so much to us as a young startup. It's part validation, but also understanding that we now have the capital and the resources to truly educate and raise awareness about the importance of hearing health and how it affects the rest of your life, including your quality of life, as well as secondary physical and mental health issues. Terrific. Our next hero. Give us your pitch. I'm Chris Ellis, CEO of Audio Cardio, a data and science backed mobile app that's designed to maintain and strengthen your hearing. You can think of us as physical therapy for your hearing. Because over 400 million people suffer from disabling hearing loss, but the bigger underlying problem is the lack of access to care, expensive costs, and negative social stigma associated with the solutions on the market. Audio Cardio Sound Therapy targets damaged ranges of frequencies by repeatedly stimulating the cells at the barely audible level. This causes them to fire together, wire together, and send the signals to your brain so that they can be processed as meaningful sound. By continuously stimulating these cells, we aim to help promote and support the neural pathways necessary for sound to travel to the brain. To take your assessment, you simply move the volume slider to the point where you can barely hear the tone being played. You would do this several times 
for the left ear and again for the right to create your personalized sound therapy. Audio Cardio is an easily accessible and affordable sound therapy that you can do passively in the background while you listen to your favorite music, work on your laptop, and fall asleep. The therapy is inaudible and won't interrupt your other activities. Our technology has been patented and the CTIP Accelerator Program provides up to $50,000 in annual assistance through an FDA grant. Audio Cardio's technology has been clinically validated with Stanford University, Palo Alto Medical Foundation, and Samsung Medical Center, with over 70% of the participants having a change in their hearing ability by 10 decibels or more within a few weeks. There is a tremendous market opportunity selling our solution direct to consumer and to large enterprises. To date, we have had more than 2,000 subscribers, signed multiple partnerships with veteran organizations, and continue to grow our direct to consumer business. Terrific. So the thing I'm thinking about is market size. How much do you charge for this in a year? It's, uh, it's $99.99 per year. You're at $760 million market size. Is that big enough? And is there more that you can sell them? Are you going to add to this in some way? Is there, a, is there an expanding market? That's our addressable market today, what we see it as. There are more than 450 million people globally that suffer from hearing loss. And 90% of those people have something called sensorineural hearing loss, which is noise induced or from aging. And those are the types of people that we can help. Right, but once you've helped them, it's a certain size market. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if you can go beyond that. Is there something else you would sell them? Can you use the sound to find depression? Can you help people with anxiety using the sound? I and mean, that's where the team is exactly. trying to get to. What are the other markets you can use of, uh, using the technology that you have? Absolutely. Untreated hearing loss is associated with isolation, depression, cognitive decline, and dementia. So for all of those things, if you have you know, potentially better hearing, Hopefully you'll be more willing to engage in social activities as you get older, be less frustrated with your personal relationships. There are a lot of other things that audio cardio could potentially help. And we also have a roadmap to improve our product and target more frequencies that the human ear can hear. I'm interested in the cardio part of the uh, name. The cardio part stands for the, the training. So it's, it's, it's a once a day, one hour sound therapy that you can do while you do other activities since it is in, inaudible. And that's the kind of cardio or the training portion of it. Doesn't cardio mean heart? Isn't it something to do with the heart? We mean it in the sense of cardio, like, like training. Cardio in the sense of a workout. I see. How is your technology protected? Did you develop the IP yourself? Is it protected? Did you license it? Uh, who owns the IP? We did develop the technology ourselves. My co-founder is the inventor of our technology. We have a patent holding company and we have the exclusive perpetual license from our patent and our patents have been awarded. Oh wait, so, so your organization doesn't own the patent? You just have a perpetual license of it? Perpetual exclusive license, correct. So who owns the patent? our patent holding company. Why would anybody invest if they don't own the patent? Because we're still protected just as much, but this is for the consumer market, there's the medical market, and it really depends on the investor and what their appetite is for consumer versus medical or both. Uh, Chris, it's a bad, bad, bad idea. If I can give you one advice, merge the patent holding company with this company. If you're hedging your bet, nobody's gonna invest in you because they're gonna hedge their bet. Okay, understood. Okay, I don't know about any of that stuff. I just know that this is a great idea. Someone like me who has um, rock and roll sons and is like completely deaf at this point because of them, I would love to do this. And what are the uh, success stories? Who are the, do you have examples of what the percentages of or their hearing is back or? Yeah, through our clinical studies, uh, we had over 70% of the participants have a significant change in the hearing of by 10 decibels or more within a few weeks. Yeah, why would I sign up for a year if in a couple of weeks I already get my hearing back? Because you can continue to make progress uh, beyond those first two weeks. It's, we see. like we liken it to working out. In the first two week, two to four weeks, you may see some results, but then when you're in month three and four, you're really making more results. And of course, at some point, everybody does plateau. Oh, and then you lose them. 
eventually, yes, your hearing may degrade. If you still go to loud concerts or go to restaurants and age, of course, or get sick, these are all things that can damage your hearing. So our goal is to give you a better quality of life. What is your income so far? We're on track for $50,000 this year. How long would people yeah. stay on the program uh, on average? What do you think? Right now we're seeing about a 60% retention at four months. And we've also seen quite a few people just purchase outright for the entire year and six month subscriptions as well. Terrific. Well, thank you, Chris. Thanks so much for coming and meeting the Drapers. All right, thank you so much for this opportunity. So what did everybody think of audio cardio? I'm sort of on the fence on this one. I, I didn't think he was very energetic. If there's anything else that I look for in an entrepreneur, it's energy. Bill is saying that he loves my energy. All he wants to do is invest in me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Totally. That's exactly right. I, I would back any of the three of you. I mean, I thought he was good. The market is small, but it's a good niche market. He seemed to have a good set of success rate. I did not like the fact that they're hedging their bet and keeping the patent on a parent company that think they don't think that this is really the one that they want to really build. And that tells you that they're really not sure they want to put their heart and soul into this company or else you would put everything in one company and, and work hard to make it a success. Yeah, in fact, I, um, I hit on that too, and I did it twice, if you remember. First, I asked, well, what, if, what happens after the hearing thing? He didn't bite on that. He didn't say we're no. gonna do more things. When they hold back like that, you don't trust them as much. Uh, so I, I was a little concerned about that myself. I think if they regroup and then they say, well, look, we're gonna be all in on this, and the hearing's the first yeah. thing that we're going after, then maybe we reconsider exactly. this, but uh, I'm, I'm not as enthusiastic myself. Polly, what did you think of this one? I really want to try it. So please invest in it because my hearing it sucks and would love to be improved. Okay, also, doesn't the market grow? as people age? I mean, aren't, don't you just keep getting new markets all the whole time? Yeah, um, but I think you can go to audiocardio.com and become a customer without having me have to invest. Okay. <laughs> we'll do our thumbs. I've got to say my thumb goes from here to here if he throws the whole, all the technology in. But anyway, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. Which way are we going? Which way are we going? Okay, we got one up and three down. All right. So now we've got to decide which of these three is the winner that's going to move on to the semifinals. Is it audio cardio? Is it predictive? Or is it choose health? So which is it going to be? Uh, Polly, why don't you tell us who you come out in favor of? Um, audio cardio, just because of, for selfish reasons, I guess. My second place is the um, predictive, which I thought was, those two guys were pretty brilliant. That's how I would shake down. So I would go with predictive as number one, choose health as number two, and audio cardio as number three. Predictive uh, has good team. The person is absolutely dedicated. He has the right reasons to be doing so. And I think uh, they're brilliant, bright people as a team. So I really like that. Choose health is a market that is going to happen. You know, people are trying it. A lot of people in that market, somebody would buy them just because if they can develop a good user experience. Audio cardio, I was not as impressed with. I mean, it is, it is what it is, but there's really not. They didn't seem like the entrepreneur that I would put my money behind. 
I am totally with him. You said it just the way I would have said it, except better. We have exactly the same order. I was a little more um, interested in audio cardio because of the technology, the idea that you have an app that improves your hearing. I mean, that's sort of a major breakthrough, but I didn't like how he was playing hide the ball and he didn't really want to tell us about the patents. And, uh, you know, I think there was, a, there was a problem there. Okay, now we'll just have to um, bring them all back on. Hey, wait and a what's your prediction? Mine comes from the crystal ball. Yeah, Dad. He doesn't have an opinion. He's, he's very spiritual. We're going to bring them back on and then we're going to tell them how it came out and who goes forward. So thank you, heroes. You did extraordinary work. It was great to see all these pitches. Together, you guys are gonna improve health in many different ways. Starting with Choose Health, it's quite extraordinary and getting the in-home test, I think is gonna be a very powerful product. Uh, we were concerned a little bit about you not having that much in the way of technology that it was just for the home. But the good news about that is that you will have access to the end user and be able to continue to provide new services to the end user. So we like that. Predictive, we thought that you were quite good and quite passionate about what you do. That's what we look for in a hero. We were concerned quite a bit about the confusion in the marketplace that would come from 23andMe versus you guys. Just because you have more than they do doesn't necessarily mean that the market will recognize you. And then audio cardio, we think it could be a major breakthrough and it's very exciting that we could potentially just have an app that improves our hearing. But we are very, very concerned about you playing a little bit of hide the ball where you're not committing to the whole thing. You're, you're sort of thinking, I'm gonna segment this out into multiple different businesses because we have this new technology. If you really want backers, they're gonna want you all in. I will uh, confer with my crystal ball and we will decide who goes on to the semifinals. Which of these three companies will go forward to the semifinals? But the good news is that even if you are not selected to go forward to the semifinals, that the crowd funds will select three of our finalists. We're going to the crystal ball and Weenie, Jeannie, Billy, Weenie, Binny, Kinny, Schneeny, Billy, Billy, Who will move forward to the semifinals? It is predictive. Predictive. Congratulations. You're moving forward. You're going to the semifinals. We're looking forward to seeing you in the semifinals. There will be nine of you there, and you'll cut down to three, hopefully, and be in our finals. The other two groups, I encourage you to continue your crowd fund and bring the crowd in. And if you're a viewer out there, go to meetthedrapers.com and you can fund these entrepreneurs, these heroes. I think it was a productive <laughs> meeting. I think the mission of Choose Health, if it relates to people at home, uh, we'd obviously love to have uh, everybody that's interested in trying to democratize access to health information on board and we're still focused on our vision of uh, making this the best and easiest customer experience in at home testing. It, it was a great meeting. The biggest surprise was the fact that I think that they believe that we were only investable if we held our patent within our organization. I think that they see a lot of potential in it. Uh, I think there's just a few things that we need to work out to be uh, investable by the Drapers. The viewers should invest in us because we all know someone that's suffering in silence that has hearing loss in tinnitus. So there's always someone that you know out there that could use the audio cardio app. Uh, one word, I would say wow. <laughs> yeah, for me, great, <laughs> two, two thumbs up. <laughs> we were just very, very excited uh, to, to be at the semi-finals. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a great chance that is given to us. Well, I think that's a really privilege to talk to the, those Silicon Valley legendary people. I mean, I really appreciate this opportunity. Basically what we uh, like to bring is the, from reactive medicine to proactive medicine. So I'm very excited to be able to reach out to these many people to this show. And I think that's, that's a blessing. And we'll see you next week 
on Meet the Drapers! <laughs> We're funding With our tech, AI, VR, Bitcoin is the best. We'll build and work and grow with you, having fun along the way. We'll change the world for better.